So welcome, today we're going to be doing uh, Try Hack Me Blueprint, which is an easy room, but it does teach you a lot on uh, Windows machines, things like that. So I already started the machine, alright, um, I'll fit six minutes left to do this. Let me exit out Zap over here, and um, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, we'll start our MF scan, we'll make a directory for this guy also. Nope, oh, that's not what I want to go to. Alright, so let's start up our MF scan and make a directory for this guy, and we'll go from there. Oh. Whoopsie daisy. Oh, it already exists? Let's remove it then. How about that? I know it already existed. I don't know why it already exists. Whatever. There we go. Okay. Let's see the end of that. And um, yeah, we'll do our MF scan. We'll see what we get from there. So we do have a uh, MySQL, it looks like. We have SMB up, uh, port 80, port 135, port 8080. So it could be Tomcat, it could actually be a lot of different things. Um, let's go ahead and look at that SMB like real quick. So that's to be client. Uh, attack L. And we'll look at that guy first. And we'll try to get some stuff off of there. So, looks like we got a couple things. Users and Windows. Uh, so, we do have SMB. Let's go ahead and also do a uh, enum for Linux on that guy. And maybe we'll find some user information and anything like that. Um, let's go ahead and try to log into like users. See if there's anything there. Uh, okay, cool. So users isn't there. So let's go to LS Tech LA or DIR or just LS, I mean. And we do get desktop.ini. I don't think that's really anything that we care about. We can't get it though. We can get desktop. INI just in case. Okay, we can also buy CD in the public. Anything's in here. Uh, CD into downloads, I guess. Documents. I mean, we can look around a lot of these different places, but uh, probably not going to see too much in here. Yeah, it's just desktop on the I and I everywhere, which I don't think is anything. Um, so, only so much in there. Let's go ahead and check out that port 80 and everything else. Go ahead and do some MF scans, or yeah, some um, SMB scans also. So we have. SMB enumerate users right. Let's go ahead and locate the MSC. Let's go ahead and locate uh see what we have running here, what we can do for SMB scans. For SMB we can do um enum groups, enum users, that's what I want to do first. So let's go ahead and uh exit out of here. And let's try to do that real quick. Alright, and let's go ahead and check out that port 80 and also that port 8080. I'm going to copy this IP, IP address. We'll check out both 80 and 8080 and, uh, you know, see if we have anything in there. Um, yeah. I think this camera is way up, huh? There we go. That's probably like a little bit better. So, that and also 8080, right? Okay, 8080 brings us right to this OS Commerce. This one brings us to a 404 directory not found. Then we have OS Commerce 2.3.4. Okay. Um, we do have a Steve, it looks like. We have an administrator, a guest, and then lab. Full name Steve. So we did find some things. Cool, that, that's good. Alright, uh, well, let's go ahead and search for it. OS Commerce 2.3.4. And it does have multiple vulnerabilities. We do have a couple of remote code execution, arbitrary file upload. I don't think anything with 
Metasploy. Sorry, MSF Council. And uh, we'll see if Metasploy has anything. This is Windows machine, a little more realistic than what we're used to, things like that. Now, you can see that I've also got Metasploy MS5. Okay. Um, there's a reason for that. So, <clears throat> let me go ahead and show you guys how to do this because this is a big thing for CCPT. Um, let me locate. Oh, whoops. I think it's actually in my CCPT folder. CD. Uh, yep, right there. So if we go to pin my Cali, all right, you do a sudo um, bash pin my Cali dot sh. You can actually downgrade your Metasploit. If you're not running on version five for like CCPT things like that, that will cause problems. Okay. Let's go ahead and search for uh, OS Commerce real quick. And we do have a couple things in here. So we have an installer unauthenticated, unauthenticated code execution. Let's try to go ahead and run that first. So we use zero, show options. And it's saying the URI is catalog install, ports wrong. So let's go ahead and set our R ports to 8080. Set our L host to ton zero. All right, L ports fine, 4444. Um, our R host should be this like right here. And it looks like we're supposed to have something a catalog install. So we're gonna try to run it and see what happens. Okay, it says target is not vulnerable. I feel like because we have catalog install, catalog, OS Commerce 2.344 catalog. Let's see if that exists first. Let's just see about that. Catalog and then install it. <coughs> I think it's because we have this probably not used to having OS Commerce. So catalog install does exist for us. Let's go ahead and set that URI to that. And then we'll run it. Okay, so that worked. But right now we're running a PHP code. Uh, yeah, PHP code. So we're not going to be able to do much with that. So let's go ahead and immediately see in the desktop. Desktop try hack me. Um, and it was, this one's called Blueprint. Because um, we can't do much in here. We can't like load Kiwi, things like that, because it's PHP. So there's only so much we can do like right now. Can do a sysinfo, and it looks like Windows 7 Search Pack 1. Really, I wonder if we could just use the um, terminal blue um, SMB or MAP TAG P 444. Yeah, let's see if it's vulnerable to SMB TAG MS 17 TAG 010. Let's see if it's vulnerable to that. Oh, whoops, and we have 10, 10, 10, 10, 171.219. Is that not one of the scripts? Uh, let's see what, what's the script called. Is this MS17-010, not SMB? Yeah, SMB bomb, okay. Or if it's that or one of the other ones that you know but it's also I don't think this is I guess not I don't think this is 64 bit this might be 32 bit also so I think with 64 bit it actually says something down here too and it's not 64 bit so let's actually try that PSEXEC one or if that if it's followed with that one yeah right there Because I can tell if it's vulnerable to it or not, it's a problem. I don't think it will. This would be long. You can always test it out later with um, Metasploit or something like that. But, um, okay. So, I think it's a 32-bit. So, I think what we have to do is we have to then type up our own uh, MSF Veno because we're not going to be able to do anything in here. If we look at the objectives of this guy, right? We're supposed to get the NTLM and root.txt. Um, there would be other ways to be able to do it, but we're not going to be able to do those ways because there's not, it's not like there's other users on, things like that. 
This computer is a part of a network. So we're going to have to get a different shell pretty much. So let's go ahead and control Z. Um, use exploit multi handler. Okay. Uh, from here, we're just going to do a um, set payload to Windows um, interpreter reverse TCP. We'll do something like that. All right. We'll set our L port to 9999. Set our L host from zero. That should be the only information that I need. Okay. Then we'll do a run tag J to run that job in the background. All right. Uh, we can go back to session one, which is our my interpreter session like right here. If you don't know what session it is, you can type in sessions attack I, and that'll tell you. All right, cool. Session one. And then we can do an MSF Venom over here. And remember, it's not a 64-bit, so we're not doing 64-bit. So we're doing attack P Windows slash interpreter. Yep, just like this. Some of that. So Windows, the payload's gonna be Windows Interpreter Reverse TCP. Alright, we're using 86, x86, which is a 32 bit system, right? The L host, which is myself, let me go ahead and go to IF config, 1098166, okay? So the L host myself, L port 9999, I already put that over on my um guy over here, right? He's actually running in the back like right now. We're gonna save it as a file and it's an executable. And we're going to save it as runme.exe. Now you notice over here I'm in desktop try hack me blueprint. Over here I'm desktop try hack me blueprint. I can now upload runme.exe. From here I can do an execute tag at the file runme.exe. Okay. Once that runs, we had a reverse. Uh, TCP connection, right? Interpreter reverse TCP. We had that other job, that exploit multi handler running in the background with the same payload on it, right? That same exact payload, okay? It's now connected, all right? Because that was running in the background. So we can now background this session, session stack I. And I should have a session two now with Windows. So session two, now I can look up everything because now I actually have a Windows interpreter reverse TCP not a PHP one. So now I can load Kiwi. Alright. From here I can do hash dump. I can LSA secrets, everything like that. Hash dump. Boom. Okay. Let's go ahead and do a, do some other fun stuff here. First off, let's answer the question. Lab lab users, NTLM hash. So that's the NTLM hash like right there. Answer format. Ooh. Oh, maybe you want to, um, let's go ahead and nano ntlm.txt. Maybe you just want that stuff. So we'll go ahead and throw these three guys into a file. And let's do John the Ripper. John, tech, tech, format equals nt, I think it is, for ntlm.txt. I think we do it like that. I think we can. Might do a fork four. Might say the format's lm. I always forget. Yep. Consider fork equals four. Let's go ahead and do a fork four. And hopefully we can crack that guy. What John the Ripper? Um, I didn't even tell what word this DB used, did I? Did I crack him? What happened here? You didn't do anything. Session completed. Let's go ahead and uh, not even tell the format to use. Go ahead and just do that. Load one password hash lm. So let's say do a format lm. Let's try that. Okay, let's go ahead and um, locate John Dapop. And we're going to move back RF. So I'm not getting anything in here. This is blank. 
slide check that show. Three password hashes cracked, zero left. You cracked zero password hashes, you lying thing, you. Yeah, this thing is cracked zero passwords. So we're going to have to figure out a way to be able to crack those passwords. That's okay. Let's go ahead and um, probably look up some other stuff. So lab user NTLM hash decrypted. All right, and then root.txt. Definitely going to need to figure out how to get this guy's NTLM hash. We could probably also bring him in online. NTLM decrypt. Probably bring him online and do it like right here too. Well, the link doesn't match. How's the link not match, dude? I'm talking about cool. Um, let's say NTLM down the river. See if you can do it. John, tie tie for it, not NTLM. That's what he's saying. So he's saying John, tie tie format equals net NTLM. Okay. What we'll password hash is loaded? That didn't work out at all. Okay. Should I should be out version two. That's the LM V2, that's what he's saying. I've never done that one. Yeah. I've done NT, I've done LM. I've never done that NAT NTLM version 2. Um, so let's go ahead and keep messing around over here, though. So we have... He's still not cracking anything, huh? Kind of hard to crack the password when the thing doesn't get cracked, and it doesn't. I mean, especially with user lab, like lab's not even coming close to getting cracked. So I don't know what it wants me to do with that one. And I can put it on my home computer and then try to do it with um hash gap, I'm not going to do that for this. Same three password hash crack. Crack zero. Fucking lie, it's like shit. Alright, so um, what we can do now is let's try to make our life like a little bit easier. We should already be root, actually. Um, so, ID. Get you ID. Yeah, we already are system authority. So let's go ahead and uh, run get GUI. Okay, and what we can do with this is we can do a little get GUI. So we can run get GUI. Tech you Ryan, because I don't know any of the passwords. I can't crack anyone for some reason. Tech P Ryan, and we'll enable a remote desktop. So as you can see, this is actually going to enable remote desktop. Put this username in there, and also hide that user within remote desktop. Um. And I'm still wondering why I can't crack any of those passwords, too. So that's like my next thing is like, what the heck is going on here with that, you know? So.
I don't know, some things you just don't understand. You could not actually get gooey, really. Run that one more time. That's really weird. Hold desktop is already enabled. Opening portal with the firewall. Never had a fail whenever I was already okay. Let's go ahead and migrate to a different service. How about that? Migrate something a little more stable in here. Um, spool is usually something that a lot of people like to migrate to if it's running on here. It's like a prayer service. Yeah, spool. There you go. Boom. So let's migrate to 1236. So we're migrating from runme.exe to that other one like right there, right? Cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to uh, run that git GUI again. I've never seen this not work if I was an administrator. So let's also from here go to crack station. And we'll try to throw that hash in there. It's still not working. All right, that's a new one for me. We we'll grab that hash dump, grab this information like right here. Let's go ahead and throw that in the crack station. We'll see what we get with that. I am not a robot. Crack hashes. Unknown, unrecognized. Um, no, the M part is the NT, I believe. The front part is the LM, the M part is the NT. I might just be able to just do this and just crack it. Google Plus, there we go. Okay, so we have a password for lab is Google Plus. Alright, cool. So we may be able to do some of that. Maybe I'll remote desktop into it. I believe Remino was actually turned on. Um, I've never seen get GUI not work if I've been administrator, so that's that's a new one for me. I've never seen that one before. Let's go ahead and 1010.171.219. User's name is Lab. Hopefully, 171.219. Really? Can't connect to the RDP server. Hmm, that's weird. Maybe uh, that's a problem over here, too. Let's go ahead and um, also um, run what is here? Oh, okay. Right. Dump. Is there something like that? Yes. Lost. Well, hope we can run it here. So uh, we can also do the LSA dump or whatever it is. Secrets. Numerate users. Numerate shares. I mean, we can really run whatever we want. We can install SSH. Um. When you know, try that one. There you go. Right now, it's running when you know, like right now. Um, just a bunch of stuff that we can run. You can run anything in here. If you run in there, if you type in um, use, I think it is, or maybe it's just, maybe it's still run. But post windows, you got escalate, get system, go and check it, all that stuff. We already are systems, so it really matters. Screen a lock. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of things you can do in here for Windows. So, I should get stop that one. Let's just go ahead and get the, uh, let's get a shell run on this guy. And whatever you can get, remote desktop, use it. On the CD and the C, there, there. Uh, should be users. Let's go ahead and CD and the administrator. Um, usually you want to get a desktop and then we'll type root.txt.txt .txt, I guess it's called and type is kind of a cat where you get to see the file just so you know those things I think is cat so we got Google Plus then we have the other guys hash like right there so I'm going to go ahead and Google Plus and then we'll throw in this guy also and we'll submit that too and we've completed that one like right there. So that was a pretty good one. And there's a bunch of stuff that we can do on here now. We're in here, right? Um, we can run hundreds of different things on, on Windows machines. So we can run uh, post Windows. 
can I just hit tab twice? 184 different things. So we already are system, screen unlock, just QL. Uh, now we load Kiwi also, we can do other stuff too. I'll show you that here in a second. Um, FTP stuff, getting credentials from FTP. You know, if you know what they're using FTP and uh, you know what type they're using, you can get credentials from that. Get, gather credentials from Windows Auto Logon. Let's try that one like right there. I don't think I've ever used that one before. That seems like it's exciting. Oh, that would be pretty cool. But, I mean, we can really do whatever. Install Python. Try that one. I don't think it's going to because it probably doesn't. Oh, oh. It's installing Python right now. Let's create a Python reverse shell. Pretty sure it's installed Python system. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and stop that. We can also do a um, a screen share. LSA dump Sam. We do that. All right. This will also dump hashes, as you can see. And we can also do LSA dump secrets. And you might find other users in these areas, things like that. Okay. Um, so other things we can do is we can do a screen share. Okay, which this guy will actually pull up the screen for you. As you can see, we have administrator and we have Steve. So lab isn't even one of the uh, usernames there. Okay, that are even allowed to do remote desktop doesn't look like. Alright, so that was screen share right there. Um, we can do a screenshot, which will just take a picture and save it. Uh, we can do record mic. Okay, which that's not going to do anything because there's probably no microphone on there. Um, we can do a webcam. Um, list and see if there's any webcams on it. Most likely there isn't. From there, we can snap a picture or do a stream of that webcam. Alright. You know, there's most likely nine webcams on there, though. Uh, we can do keylogger, uh, key scan start. Alright, which will start the key scroll sniffer. When we want to dump those key scans, we do a key scan dump. Okay. Uh, right now, we are also in a school service. If we were to migrate into, um, let's see this here. So right now, we're in school service, right? So if we want to really get everything, we can migrate into explorer.exe if we're able to. If it's on here, it doesn't look like it is on here. No, it doesn't look like it is on here, but we can migrate things like that. Okay, like explorer.exe, and from there, be able to, uh, you know, do a lot more <clears throat> um, with, like, key scanners and everything like that. But, yeah, I mean, pretty much, if you just press a question mark on here and just start to mess with everything, uh, creds all. Shouldn't be Kerberos because you shouldn't have any ticket granny tickets right there down here. Um... And then I also, you know, the video is obviously over with. I also want to see if it was uh, vulnerable to anything else. Because he is Windows 7, right? So it's Joel's ES. Um, search for PSEXC. I want to see if he's vulnerable to any of these guys, like right here. Like, this current local current user PXCC. I wonder if we can get that. Well, that's current user token. That's not going to work. It's, um, that's the eternal blue. Does not. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Okay. I was just thinking about just trying something like that. Gotta change my old port because it's not going to be able to be used. Get the R host. Okay, so that one didn't work right there, but we can probably set SMB user to lab, right? And then set SMB pass to Google Plus. See if that works. Huh. So that's access denied, really. Um, 
wonder if we can crack the um, if we can crack this guy like right here crack station will crack in nope won't crack him okay I'll see if I can crack him and then go in from there um, let's try like that hmm that's actually denied huh to go into SMB huh shares admin so what if we can uh do anything else with this really because we can always try this one scan it for it this is kind of just going above and beyond you know I usually like do at the end of these videos see if there's anything else we can possibly do with it you know you never know yeah it's definitely Windows 7 service pack 1 it's all more of his bar, well, that's why I keep testing different stuff. I'm like, uh, not very vulnerable or anything, huh? Hmm. It's pretty crazy. We're, um, this will be fine. Can show us something. Uh, I don't remember what the names were. I wonder if this guy can show us something. If we can change the SMB share or something like that to like users or something like that. Or if you want to try users on a um, what was it lab or whatever since you have this password I wonder if we could also do a pass the hash kind of thing too you know we could um, search for PSEFTC I wonder if pass the hash would be a lot of worse work on this guy so we'll go ahead and run set the SMB password to the whole thing we want to use that whole guy like right there so I'll try to set it to this thing right here. Set SMB user to administrator. And we'll run that. That would be sweet if that worked. Is that one going to work? And that's how you pass the hash. So if you made it to the left, like right there, good job. Um, but that is how you pass the hash. So just so you guys know, uh, there's something that you don't see all the time. That was pretty sweet, like right there. So now we are in uh, under administrator also. So that was actually pretty cool. I didn't know you could do that on this guy. Um, <laughs> it's always cool whenever you see something you didn't even test out beforehand, you know, and. Uh, yeah, this, so that was that was actually really cool. <laughs> I haven't seen past the hash in a while too, so um, done classes on everything else. Have not seen in a while. So in case you guys are wondering what just happened, like right there, we'll do a show options. Like right, I know I was kind of moving fast on it. Oh, my old host is just ton zero. My old port five 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 five, right? Come back up here. I said my SMB user is going to be administrator. Okay, right? Um, and then I said my SMB pass was going to be this hash, like right here. I don't know his password. I still don't know it. But we're going to go ahead and make it that hash, okay? Share driver is left as admin, remote port, okay, cool. And then our host. When we ran and ran that, it, it was called pass the hash. And it ran this hash and said, yeah, okay, cool, that's correct. You're good. You're authenticated now. And we have to authenticate ourselves as the administrator on this machine. 
Yeah. So I don't know if lab can actually get in like this. I wonder, can we do it with lab? I just don't think lab has the right to actually do anything on here. That's why we have so many problems with lab. Nope, okay, so he doesn't have the rights. Okay, um, I wonder if Guest has the rights. Uh, probably not. And yeah, that was pretty cool, though, being able to pass the hash and show how that worked. Especially that I did not realize that was going to work. Nope, okay, cool. So it says as a new user to administrator. S-T-R-A-G-O-R, and it's the SMB pass to this. Now, I think I should actually be able to take this also, and then do a pass the hash with PSDXCC in here and pack it. I think. Now I'm kind of starting to get, I mean, I know I can, but I'm not very good with the packet. Um, so now I'm starting to get a little bit too deep into stuff. Alright, cool, and pack it, and I know I can do a PSEXC in there, right? Home Cali and pack it. Let's go ahead and look at that. Um, there's examples, test, and pack it. I know we can do it in here, I just don't know how. So, but you know who does know how? Google does. Let's then be packet. Packet smb.py. smb.py, huh? SMB.py, there it is. Let's try it. Where's the Python 3? I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. What do you need to know? Oh, God. Jesus Christ, I'm not going to read this whole damn thing. What do you want to know? Because you're not giving me any feedback or anything, so... What do you want? Oh, big guy? What do you want from me? <laughs> oh, whoops. See, Daisy, there we go. That's a beat up high. Pack it. This would be something I think I have to uh, SMB EXCC. That's probably the one that I want to use, like right there. Yeah, I definitely want to do an SMB EXCC for this one, not whatever that was. This is SMB 3.5. Do SMB.exec. What's it called now? SMB.exec. Packet build scripts, examples, examples, packages. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and go to CD slash home, tally, and packet, build, scripts, Python, SMB, exec.py. What do you want me to do in here? So, that's going to target domain slash username, password at target name or address. Okay, so we want to do a username. Username to the administrator. We are receiving our administrator. Then the uh, looks like password. I don't know if that's even right because of how this thing's at. At 10 10 171.219. That's not it. Yet. Yeah, I think the tensor login is available as well to a bad username or authentication information. Alright, last try here. This one may not work. I do have to mess with this stuff more off more. Um I'm not gonna go with this stuff, so or if I can do like pass the hash within packet, you know. I guess I'll look up stuff like that. The hash looks like it went to WMIEC, didn't it? Works off this fix instruction extraction of hashes zeros instead of alarm hashes configuration post pass the hash attack. We already did all that. What we got here? Privilege debug. Okay, we didn't need to do any of that. Pass the hash over SMB. That's what we want. Use our auxiliary, okay, we already did that. Empire invoke. Oh, really now? Do it over PowerShell, okay, cool. And pack it, SMB client.py. Okay. So that's what we're looking for now. SMB client.py. So we want to go to there. I believe. I think example, let's go ahead and actually point on SMB client. Okay, cool, we already got it. So SMB client.py, tag hashes. There's an NTL on hash, so I believe we keep that actually and We don't do all zeros, I don't think, for that. I don't think we do. Hashes. The hash in there. Um, Ignite administrator. What is this one even called? What is this? Blueprint. I believe it is right. That's the hash name for it or whatever. I believe the hash name for it is blueprint slash administrator, right? The R A Q R at ten dot ten dot one three one dot two nineteen. Okay, type help help. Looks like we're in it. Open the SMB connection against target. Okay, open. Because we can make a directory, move a directory, we can get. Mount list info. Yeah, yeah, we're in there. Cool. That's pretty sweet. LS wildcard is all filed in current directory. CD. Uh, see that. No share selected. Yeah, damn share. Curl's login, login hash. Shares. Type C users, okay, so CD in the users. We'll share selected, okay. Oh, so we can put stuff in here, we can get stuff. That's why I know we're in it. We can put stuff, things like that now. 
um, who returns the security connected to and a required. Let's see? So that was pretty cool, like right there. And yeah, it looks like we got into that guy. So that's that's pretty cool with his um, hash. So that's pretty cool. Um, for close and close exit oh, no. okay cool so that's uh that was that um, so we got in a couple different ways got into path the hash we got in through SMB or um, packet we got in through well we found out all the information through OS commerce so hope you guys enjoyed that one hope you learned a lot I learned a lot on that one uh, I haven't done past the hash in quite some time because nothing really seems to work with it anymore. And a lot of the um, difficulties I've seen don't really uh, like to be used with it anymore. So I hope you guys learned something on that one. And uh, yeah, so you guys have a good one, alright?